Morning, Terry. Oh. I'll do that. You sit down. Thanks. Must have been a good night. Good night. <laughs> Oi, on your toes is Ambrose. Morning, Mr. Ambrose. Where? It's all right. He's not in today. Late night. Mm. Brenda? Talk me into running her home. Not from your place. I was in my place. She was in crew. Crew? I was going to London. Changed her mind. You are a mug. I am a mug. Still. Suppose you should be glad she hadn't reached Watford. <laughs> so you're not making any progress then? What? You know. Oh, impossible. We start off okay. Well, you know what she's like. Compulsive messer. Never shuts up, never listens. Always taking the mick. Yeah. We haven't met. Oh, then by the end of the evening, it's just... I just want to go to bed. Well, that's progress, isn't it? <laughs> then what happens? Malcolm? Malcolm? <sighs> Five more minutes, Mum. <laughs> what do you think? Ludicrous. Yeah, it is better. <laughs> You're late. Wolfie been cracking the whip. Oh, I couldn't crack his head. He's just a big kid who wants to have his cake and eat it. Oh, I never thought of you as a piece of cake. It's gone all prissy ever since I told him what he could do with his turnip wine. Still wants to see me, though. But you will remember to put those uh, personal letters I sent you in the uh, paper shredder. Not the only thing of his I'd like to put in the shredder. Oh, little Sydney. Smarmy slob. And have you not sent out those claim summaries yet? He forgets that after a bank holiday, everyone gets a bit behind. And I suppose you've got more behind than most. <laughs> I thought you were going to London. It was closed. No, I got dragged off the train by an admirer at crew. Pleaded for me to stay, you did. Oh, aye. Right. You got Muggins Malcolm to bring you back, did you? Yeah. In his sidecar? No, he rode the bike. You can't get two in a sidecar. Brenda. <laughs> So Cluffy's still giving you a hard time, you say? Oh, he's so petty. You're too good for him. True. He doesn't appreciate a good thing while he's having it. <laughs> Just a bloody big kid he is. Well, there's the answer. Tell him if he doesn't grow up, you'll put a teddy bear in the shredder. I might just do that. How's yours? Fast asleep under me pillow. <laughs> Malcolm. Oh, he's a drip as well. If he was any wetter, you'd have to follow him round with a mop. <laughs> We should give them both the eve. You're right. There again, the next along might be worse. Could be violent or rob your purse when you weren't looking. I suppose you're right. At least my ornithologist's well-meaning, kind to his mum, and always washes his armpits. That's nice. Yeah. I hate fellas who smell, don't you? Especially when you're going to be wrapped around them on the back of a bike. It's like nursing a bin bag. <laughs> Which brings us back to Sydney. I think you're the saint to put up with them, nothing less. I just have this wonderfully kind and generous nature. And he takes advantage. No, Pamela, you're a fool to yourself. She's a one-off, isn't she, Malk? Hmm. Yeah, uh, once they made Pamela, they, uh, broke the mould. You're right there, Malk. They broke the mould. And with the pieces, they made three new ones. <laughs> what did you say? What did she say? I, I didn't quite catch it. People watching, we could take one each if there were three new ones. Mm. Same again, Malk. Oh, yes, please. And us. Oh, no, Tar, not for me. I'm going after this. Don't worry, I'll have this. It's your shout. We never have any new ones these days. Well, it's Mary. Oh, we've done her. You've done her. And I'm afraid it's none out of ten for that one, Pamela. You better have another go. Have you been talking to her? That's against the rules. No choice. 
I was in the laundrette on Wednesday, and when I came to my turn for the dryer, she catches a ride for seven Lyle stockings and a birdcage cover. Seven stockings? That's what it says. One for straining the chip fat. Oh, of course. <laughs> and she's not from Southport, she's from Hale. Hale? Hale in Cheshire. Well, then we can call her Hale Mary. <laughs> well, that's another thing. She calls herself Frida. Oh, no, that's too much. She's wrong there. She's definitely a Mary. Mind you, right about her teeth. Not her own. She got him in a car boot sale in Mosley Hill. <laughs> See you later. Tra. Tra, Mel. Tra. Oh, put the change on the towel, Harold. Thank you. <sighs> Strange smell over there. Yeah, we call it Cedric. <laughs> it's like stale cabbage water. He works down the veg market and distills his own aftershave out the leftovers. Does he? Honest. I'll get you some if you like. It'll freshen up your sidecar. No, I mean, does he work at the... Oh, you're making it up. Gosh, Malk, you've rumbled me. You've been people watching. Just a bit. Do you want to turn? Not at the moment. I can't compete. I still feel a bit dozy. Well, if you will spend your nights kidnapping innocent young girls from cosy railway stations. You know, I don't know why I bother for all the thanks I get. Thanks. It's all right. So how did you survive the day? Hey, Terry covered for me. He's all right, you know. What about you? I've got this trick. It's very clever, really. If I'm tired after a late night, I'll spend the next day in bed. <laughs> it's all right for some. It's one of the little luxuries this government makes available for the likes of me. Take it you and Pamela are OK again. Yeah, we're mended. Actually, she's got other problems. With Hiss and Sid. He doesn't appreciate her. Yeah, so you said. It does seem a, an unlikely relationship, though. They're so, so different, aren't they? You're not wrong, Malk. It must be something in the genes this interest our family has in semi-detached wallies. <laughs> Mike, you can't be as rude as you or he'd have called it off years ago. Well, it suits him, doesn't it? He? He's got it made. He's got a plastic wife and Labrador back home in Frodsham and his own personal snogographer here in town. Brenda? Yeah? Uh... Pamela and Sydney, do they, uh... No, of course not. What a thing to say. They're just very, very close friends. In its own way, it's quite a stable relationship. But they do, uh, horse around. Hey? Eh? Horse around. Stable relationship. <laughs> Malcolm, what a dreadful joke. I promise you'll never do that again. I'm sorry. No, it's just that he takes advantage of her. You know, she's good old Pamela. And like lots of secretaries, she spends most of her time covering up his cock-ups for a tenth of his money. She deserves better. How long she worked there? Since school. Have you got 10p? She started in the mailroom, back in the olden days, before they decided you needed two A-levels to carry a post bag. <laughs> and then she went to night school for a typing. Hold on. It must be ten years, nearly. So don't you think there should be a little party? Uh. Why not? Uh, You're right there, Mal. Why not? Well, uh, next Friday, you think? OK. Round at our place. We could get some of her mates round. Yeah, she'd like that. Only we wouldn't want to stay, would we? Wouldn't we? Well, they're a bit of a pain here, lot, and they all smoke, too. I hate people who smoke, don't you? No, actually, I don't. Not as much as I hate people who wrap it on relentlessly and assume that their, 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 their prattle is understandable to, to the people they're with. Well, actually, it's so confusing that the people just switch off or, or walk out. Well, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Mal, but you're a bit like that yourself. <laughs> oh, God. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, you suggested a party. Oh, Ada, that's a surprise. A surprise party? Even better. <laughs> right, you organise the booze and I'll fix up the eats. Uh, hold on a minute. No, you're right again, Mal. Sid can organise the booze and we'll fix up the food between us. How are your fairy cakes? <laughs> God, Mal, I don't know how we do it. When the time calls for a really crazy idea, we can always rely on you. <laughs> hey, Mal, mine's a vodka in line. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are unable to proceed with your claim for damage to personal effects until all, uh, 
underline all, uh, boxes of the appropriate form CL stroke 214 have been completed. I would also point out that the case is not helped and may even be prejudiced by unflattering remarks relating to the response time of the local constabulary and the parenthood of particular officers. <laughs> uh, yours sincerely, Sidney J. Clough. Right, Miss Wilson, if you have that lot ready by four, I'll sign them then. Oh, and um, you have disposed of the you-know-what in the you-know-where. <coughs> now listen here, Sydney. Ah, uh, 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 Mr Clough, when we're in the office. Then regarding the matter of damage to personal effects, any day now, Miss Wilson will place Mr Clough's you know what in. <laughs> Hello, Claims, Deputy Assistant under Manager's Office. For you, a Mrs MacDonald. Hello. Uh, yes, speaking. Uh, no, no, not really. You see, uh, strictly, the home contents policy doesn't cover pets. Uh, I see. And, and how precisely did he come to singe his trunk? <laughs> and, until the brigade arrived. Yeah, well, yes, you're right. It is a bit complicated. Um, yes, by all means. Um, it's just that 1.30 is a touch awkward as I usually go to... Oh, well, well, if, if that's the only time. Uh, no, 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 no. No need to bring Henry with you. <laughs> Is it? It's Mrs. MacDonald. Ah, yes. Come in, Mrs. Mac... <laughs> you. Hiya, Sid. What do you want? I brought you some gas shares. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you on the phone? <laughs> yeah. I had to leave Henry downstairs. Those lift doors close a bit fast and I thought he might catch his ears. <laughs> now, listen. You have no business in this building. I shall have strong words with your sister about this. Sit down. <laughs> Don't speak to me like that! Shut up! No, listen! No, Sydney, you listen and keep it zipped. One, I do have business in this office, with you, in fact. Two, you won't mention my little visit to Pamela. And three, if you don't keep quiet, I shall be forced to conduct this interview at 17 Anti Rhinum Close, Frodsham. Phone book. What do you want? You to be nice. What are you talking about? Sydney. You are a mean, inconsiderate, conceited, thoughtless, two-time in flea bag. Now look. Which, uh, as you were about to point out, is none of my business. Only it is my sister you're taking advantage of, and I don't like it. So I want you to change. Not too much, or she won't recognise you. But what is needed is a spontaneous showing of your appreciation. I gave her those wine glasses at Christmas. <laughs> Didn't. You gave her 24 coupons and told her which petrol station to pick up at. <laughs> However, your next idea involves putting those glasses to good use. Oh, does it? You've decided to throw a surprise party for your favourite stenographer next Friday. Will you fix up the food, Brenda? Yes, of course I will, Sydney. I'll look after the liquid refreshment. Well, that's very good of you, Sydney. And if you don't agree, the lovely Mrs. MacDonald will feel compelled to make a mysterious telephone call to Auntie Rainham Close. And if that's not enough, she'll get every up here to sit on you. <laughs> <laughs> Terry? Yep? Can you make butterfly cakes? <laughs> butterfly cakes? I used to when I was a kid. You sort of cut an upside down cone out the centre, halve it, fill the middle with cream. Malcolm. Then you put the two wings in the cream like light wings sort of. Malcolm, thing. this is a joke, isn't it? One of your traditionally unfunny jokes. No. I just can't remember how you make the cream. Brenda. What? 
I smell Brenda. She's setting you up for something. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. See, there's a party for Pamela that we're not going to, Brenda and me. At least we are going, but only till it gets going, cos then we're going, because her gang smoke, at least a lot of them do. And uh, Brenda and me are in charge of food, see? Just stop there. I'll go back to the door, turn round and we'll start again, shall we? <laughs> Next Friday, there's a party. And you've been told to make butterfly cakes? No, they're, they're my idea. OK. Confuse me some more. Pamela's birthday, is it? Anniversary. On Friday of this week, she'll have been in the present job nine years, seven months and two weeks. Obviously, a cause for celebration. <laughs> it's a surprise. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. See, if we'd waited till the ten years were... Malcolm, up... please don't bother to explain. Anything involving those two is bound to mean somebody being taken for a ride. My guess is that it's you. <laughs> Sydney. Sydney. Oh, yeah. Big Sid, the wrestling promoter. From where was it? Frodsham. Oh, that was just Brenda's little joke. Yeah, at my expense that time. She made out it was some sort of Las Vegas. It's not, is it? It's the sort of place they all turn out Saturday nights to watch the traffic lights change. <laughs> That's quite nice, really. I had an uncle who lived there once. He's dead now. You mentioned Sydney. Oh, yeah, well, see, he's been giving Pamela a hard time. You know, taking advantage of her easygoing nature and... Oh, voice. what? Well, he doesn't appreciate her. And Brenda's planning another little joke, is she? No, well, not a joke as such. See, she sort of persuaded him that he ought to be more considerate. The party will be his idea. What does she do? Leave an horse's head on his pillar? <laughs> Pardon? Marlon Brando, the godfather. Oh, never mind. Look, I think you've got Brando, uh, Brenda all wrong. She's not like that. Underneath, she's a very caring person. Just at, well, at times, she can't resist having a little fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I believe that when someone works one on her and she joins in the giggles. Sure she would. She appreciates a good joke. <laughs> Maybe I should put sour cream in the butterfly cakes. <laughs> no. Got to be something better than that. Shaving cream. Oh, what a whiz. <laughs> That's the lot. We'll be in any minute. These other friends, there's uh, nobody from the office, is there? No, Sydney, don't you worry. They're a carefully selected bunch of dipsomaniacs who wouldn't know you if they fell over you. Which they probably will do in the course of the evening. At the moment, they're in training round at the grapes with instructions to be here at seven precisely. Otherwise, I'll set Malcolm onto them. These curtains look a bit odd. Shut up. Oh, hell, they're here. Kitchen. I'm late. I had the misfortune of meeting this pillar because I came out the office. Hi. Hiya. Can I give you a lift, he says? Oh, that was kind of your mouth. Yeah, I was just passing. Oh, yeah, great. What he didn't mention was that it was a 15-minute walk to the multi-storey. <laughs> and do you know which level he'd parked that Victorian boot shaker of his on? No. No, nor did he. <laughs> we had to get out the lift on every stupid floor to look for it. <laughs> then he remembers. We were in the wrong multi-storey. <laughs> We were in the wrong multi-story. <laughs> so then it's another half-mile walk, and then which level is it on? Top. It usually goes to the top. You're, like, whizzing down the ramps, don't you, Malk? It's the only time he gets up a decent speed. Not this time. <laughs> it was rush hour, wasn't it? Twenty minutes it took us to get out, and the fumes, got it was awful. And that sidecar gets all steamed up. Oh, poor you. I can just imagine it. Sitting there like an oven-ready turkey in a microwave. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sure we went round some of them floors twice. Could be. Navigation isn't exactly a strong point, is it, Mark? I'm all right once I've got the map the right way up. <laughs> God, that was another thing. Embarrassing it was. The line of traffic beeping away while he looks at his stupid map. I was always keen to find a new shortcut. In a car park. <laughs> <laughs> then it's off on a magical mystery tour out through the festival site and halfway to the bloody airport. Oh, no. It's a lovely one alongside the river. You're as mad as he is. I could have been home an hour ago if it wasn't for you. Oh, that's okay. Oh, and the smell in that sidecar. Dead gerbils. Is it? I'm taking a note. She's always saying that. Well, Pamela, why don't you go and freshen up? I'll have your tea out in five minutes and then we can go off to the grapes. And he'll buy you a compensating pint of gin and orange. Ooh, poo. <laughs> well done. Guess I'm just a natural. <laughs> 
She seemed a bit hostile. Well, not in that a bit of debauchery won't cure. <laughs> Great. Okay, now quiet. Is everybody right? Yep. Pamela, can I see you in a minute? Just a tick. Through here. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm glad to be out of there. Did you try the parsnip? No, the half pint of the turnip was enough for me. <laughs> The rest of them are putting it away happily enough. That lot? They drink liquid Ajax, provided someone else was buying. What are you having? Vodka and lime. Uh, vodka and lime and half a lager, please, Harold. All right, sir. So, I want Pamela, really? Well, you saw her. She put a brave face on things instead of the white one. <laughs> I should think by now Cluffy will be consoling her in the broom cupboard. One pound thirty-five, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. Food didn't last long. Well, as soon as someone mentions party, that lot stop eating. You know the tall girl, Glenda? She nearly starved to death once when she got three weeks' notice of a do. <laughs> Cluffy bought plenty of booze, didn't he? Yeah, all homemade. Actually, he stashed some away in the understairs cupboard to mature. For future visits? Yeah. The locusts will probably find it about half nine, so I hope it's matured by then. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to be out of it. And the smoke? It'll stink the flat out for ages. Have you ever smoked? Yeah. Every two. But I give it up when I was 12. <laughs> I don't suppose you've ever smoked, have you, Malk? No, never. I've no vices. Well, there's still time. So what are we going to do? Um, <clears throat> what about a bit of people watching? That's not advice. It's not even naughty. I'm not so tired this time. I see. And you think you can compete in the big league, do you? Yeah, I reckon. What about that fella over there? Oh, and you? OK, then. Who's first? Uh, I will, if you like. Let's see. Bit out of practice. I'd say, uh, Hungarian, yeah. No, best still, Canadian, yeah. French-Canadian lumberjack with a wooden leg. Very good. Arby's are uh, balancing everyday objects on his nose whilst playing the organ. I like it. You're certainly getting the hang of things now, Mo. Easy, really. <sighs> <laughs> Saw him come in, did you? No, I'm honest. Sorry, mate. Don't change the dollars here. What is this? Excuse me, lad. Oh, not in here. We haven't got a music licence. Who the hell is that? Like I said, a French-Canadian lumberjack with a wooden leg who, who balances everyday objects on his nose whilst playing the organ. Hello. Any person here wish to buy some firewood? <laughs> well, you've got to come second sometimes, Brenda. You're around, I think. Have I fallen in? Does he drive? 